Hey guys, Brian Stevens here with the National Real Estate Post. I have Chris Martin, the co-CEO of Oak Tree Funding, and we're here to talk about a whole bunch of things today, not the least of which is the craziness that the non-QM space has found itself in in recent months with all these rate changes. So Chris, how are you doing today? Better than a I'm couple great. of weeks, I hope? <laughs> it's definitely an evolving market. I feel better about today than I did yesterday, which is a good thing. So, I mean, let's just jump right into this. We've seen a number of non-QM companies uh, go under very quickly and unexpectedly, leaving massive ripples in the non-QM space. We've seen earning reports from a number of non-QM companies, which has been a pound of flesh after another pound of flesh. Uh, very, very difficult times in the non-QM space. What's going on and why is this happening? It's a direct result of sequential month after month, drastic and volatile rate increases, most of which I can place all the blame on the Fed and the Fed's comments and their lack of comments about how they feel like the economy is going and what steps they're going to take to to react to the things that are going on with inflation and the rest of the and the rest of the economy. The uncertainty in our markets, coupled with the rate, the extreme rate volatility has left everybody kind of wondering, you know, is this it? Is this the top of the market? Is this the bottom of the market? Where are we at? Are we going to be at 10 percent rates? Are we going to be at not 11% rates. Investors not wanting to, to pay as much for loans because if they feel like this is the top of the market, is if, if rates start going down as rapidly as they went up, the, the loans they're buying are, are not going to be worth as much. So the premiums they're paying out are just going to end up being net losses to them. It's a it's a number of different things. You know, a lot, a couple of the, at least one of the lenders that has recently gone out of business, to, to the best of my knowledge, and I'm not was not an insider there, but it had to do with how they were protecting their pipeline. There's not a great way to to, to, to hedge a non-QM loan, okay? I know that you've talked to your viewers a lot about hedging your pipelines and those that have had experience in, in the broker environment where they've hedged loan or in a banking environment where they've hedged loans or worked in the secondary, worked for a mortgage bank. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite simple, it's fairly straightforward. You sell short MBS securities based on the loan type you're doing. If you're doing a Fannie Mae loan, that the, there's a TBA that's issued months before that that bond is live. It's the same bond that's going to be issued when those loans are ready for securitization. It's the same exact dollar price. It's the same. It's how the market's tracked. It's exactly what the interest rates are based off of. Is those those MBA TBA MBS TBAs and that there's just not such an instrument for non QM loans. And uh, non QM rates are governed very heavily by the treasuries. They were being priced to the treasury swap yields. Then they now they're 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 priced to an interpolated yield curve. So when when those loans are being securitized, that's that's the interest rate. And you'd say, well, it's quite simple then. Just simply, you know, to sell short treasuries and that'll that'll take care of your problem. Well, that that does take care of the interest rate problem. But the other problem is is the is the uh is the is the credit spreads. And you know, a year ago today, right? A year ago today, Angela Gordon put out a securitization and their credit spread was 70. That means it's like a, it, that 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 would be effectively your uh your margin to the index, the index being the treasuries right now, the margin being that 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 70 basis points. So imagine you had an adjustable rate mortgage, it was 0.70% was your was your rate. They had an effective bond price that they were paying their for their triple A's was it like 1%. The swaps were super low, treasuries were super low, the, the, the yield was 70 basis points. Over the course of the last 12 months, that stepped up you know, it was at 100, then it was at 150. Then their next deal was at, you know, 200. The next deal was at 225. And and these, so these credit spreads, they, as they widen out, that's another piece that's almost impossible to hedge. You can't factor in for interest rate movement at those volatile levels and the swap spreads widening out. So when they when those swap spreads, and I'm talking specifically on the triple A's, but they, they widen out all throughout the credit stack. So double A's, single A's, triple B's, double B's, to the point that people weren't even selling B's because they were so wide. They were just so wide that it, it made better sense for them just to hold those. So that also impacts liquidity. So when you're when you're looking at you know, why did this market move so quickly? You know, th those credit spreads are all tied to investor confidence. Then there's another problem. Now the securitizations that were being done were being done at five and 4% interest rates because that's what non-QM loans were at prior to all this happening. So if you're securitizing a pool of loans at a four and a 5% interest rate, and you're an investor that has a specific time horizon that's investing in these securities, these are all institutional investors. These are all big insurance companies, pension funds. They have to turn over their their their, their assets in, at a regular basis. So if you're investing in these, you expect for these loans to pay off. Traditionally, non-QM loans 
have like a 30 CPR. I mean, they pay off very quickly. The, the curve is almost straight down after a couple of years. These people potentially are looking at maybe not getting their money back for five or seven years. So they want to price in some extra premium on top of these loans that could potentially last. This is again, no one knows where the rate bottom is. No one really knows where the rate top is. They're kind of, they're trying to figure it out. The good news is, is that the last couple of deals, and I'll give Angela Gordon credit again, they just priced a deal on, I believe Thursday or Friday, and it priced at 190 basis points to the interpolated I curve, which is the first time a securitization has been under 200 basis points since it went over 200 basis points, you know, four or five months ago. So the securitization community as a whole kind of breathed a collective sigh of relief because those folks along with Lone Star had their first one that pressed, printed at 200, both of their wax and their pools are over 6%. The idea is, is that now that we get some of these higher coupon loans in there, most of these loans are now trading in the mid sevens. They're thinking that that will continue to, to shrink the credit spread because now investors know eventually they'll be paid off because loans at that rate will have a higher tendency of paying off because there's about a 2% difference between non-QM loans and agency loans. That's more than you asked for answer to your question, but that's the state of the economy. That's the state of the economics and the securitization market you know, from our point of view. So to put it in layman's terms, with rates going up as quickly as they went up, it was kind of hard. You, you get stuck holding uh, a pool at, say, 5%, and then all of a sudden 7% is available. That 5% is no longer as attractive. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, is there a concern on the way down? So what if, you, um, what if you're selling at a 7%? And the the expectation then is is that rates are going to go back down to five percent. So that seven percent doesn't really pay anything, does it? Would not pay as much. Just like I mean, a lot of I mean, every 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 loan originator that's that's watching the show right now has pulled up an, a lender's rate sheet at one point in time or another and been like, "Wow, that's really weird. Four percent's par. Four and a half is two back. Four and you know whatever." And then we get to five and a half and it's back to par again. That's really strange. You'd think that with more rate, they'd give you more yield. And it's the same general, it's the same philosophy. If the rate's too high, it's going to run off. It's going to pay off. They don't really want to sell rates too high. Um, Me meaning that loan is that somebody's going to, if they get that 5%, they're going to refinance out of it. So right. nobody wants to hold that. They don't have a chance to recapture their money. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So right. this has been really, this has been a crazy, this has been crazy for me to watch from an outsider, just seeing what's happening with the non-QM market. So it's great to see that Oak Trees, we're still here and you guys are still fighting and that's wonderful. What are some of the steps that you've taken uh, to ensure or to at least mitigate some of the risk that these right. volatile markets have have uh, in store for us? We watch the treasuries. That's the only thing we can watch to, in, to give us any type of an indication as far as interest rate risk goes. So since September, of last year, even when rates, the, the spreads were still low, we started to really watch the three and the five-year swap yields and the three and the five-year treasuries. As they started to go up, we started to take out forward commitments, large swaths of commitments based on our existing pipeline so that we knew that when we funded loans, we had a place to sell those loans to and that we had effectively yesterday's price locked in to tomorrow's you know, production. You know, similarly to how we would hedge, uh, you know, a, a pool of agency loans, right? We would we'd sell those short, and we'd know that in the future we can sell those because we can recapture. If the rates go up, I can uh, those that uh, that security is worth less. But we, uh, you know, so it's exactly what we did. And so from September till June, we had been very successfully using that as an effective hedge for our pipeline. Never can raise rates fast enough, but you know, in, in instances where we could, we you know we did, and and uh, we we were able to make make a more profitable loans. Unfortunately, toward the end of that time period, we had a couple of investors that because of the, the volatility in the, in the credit spread market, I guess they didn't prepare for for that for the change in, in, in that as they should have and the change in interest rates. But we've taken a lot of steps, a lot of evaluation, you know, in the last couple of 60 days to really identify, you know, what happened? How did that happen? What position were we in? And how can we prevent that from going forward? And we have solidified fantastic investor relationships with people who have, you know, month in and month out, year in and year out, over a 10 to 15 year period, never faltered in their commitments. And that's who we've partnered with uh, to make sure that ourselves and obviously our, our, our customers, our, our partners are never put in that situation ever again. And, you know, we've taken the, the extreme measures in some instances just to make sure that, you know, we, we'd raise rates up to levels that we wanted to make sure that we could you know, had multiple outlets and things like that. And we've actually gotten really comfortable. We're in a much better position now. 
and we, we've we've brought rates down back to being in line competitive and in many cases beating our competitors back again uh to 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 be able to 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 bring in more profitable volume we're excited to say that we have you know we, we've uh, after today we've got no legacy loans on our books good. we have nothing that's in a low coupon problem we've been able to to successfully navigate getting out of those trades and getting things you know to getting into new trades and, and and priced to move we have warehouse lines that are open that are ready to, to, to we have the liquidity we've got the dry powder as they say to go out there and, and, and book more business and we're excited about 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 the next steps and what's coming forward yeah you know it's it's interesting because um we're saying well i'm you know we we ran into we ran into a situation that where we had to make some tough decisions but for a lot of people watching this right now um you had loans locked with companies that simply went under they were here today they were gone tomorrow so tough decisions are better than no decisions and there's a lot of loan officers and a lot of brokers out there who found themselves in the non-qm space dealing with companies that gave them no decisions because they simply went under uh and that's a really important part because non-qm isn't going anywhere in fact it's still slated to at least double this year so yes. the demand for non-qm is on the table so it's great to hear that Oak Tree's got great, strong, solid relationships right now. We've actually seen the rates come back down in line with where the market is, sometimes beating the market. So let's talk about a couple of the products that we have right now that are working for you. So oh. DSCR is a big one. Our bank DSCR, statements are big ones yep. right now. Also bank statements. We're still doing uh, 12 and 24 months bank statements. Okay. You know, some of our competitors, many of them, even some of our investor partners cut back to 80% loan to value in, in, okay. in, for, to, as a risk off mentality. but. You know, we're still offering 80% or 90% loan to value of bank statement loans. Okay. Our, our credit parameters went up, but we, we were at 680. We're now at 700 for that, but it's still relatively right in the same ballpark. Sure. We're still able to offer 85% DSCR loans. Okay. Um, we're still able to offer you know, the, the interest only programs, 40 year IO, all the programs that you've always loved that you've commented yep. about. Yep. When it comes to, you know, when it comes to saving payments, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, a loan, you know, if you take it on a 40 year DSCR loan versus a 30 year fixed, it's obviously going to save the customer a lot more money. It's going to have a, a lower net effective rate. If you were to compare that to what we should actually have to have an interest rate to get that, that interest only payment. Our staff is, is ready to go where our turn times are amazing. We're less than a day in underwriting. Um, we've, we've enhanced our technology. Uh, we've, we've, we have a redesigned uh, broker portal that allows you to go inside, upload your loan. You can upload your to docs to your to our income desk. We're now allowing in our income desk not only bank statement calculations, but if you if you have the tax returns and you and you feel like your customer could go full doc and wants to do a prime jumbo loan because our prime jumbo loan rates are amazing, we can also look at your complex self employed tax returns as well. So we're not only are we offering our income desk for the for the bank statement loans, which we always have. Uh, we're also now offering it for tax returns as well so you can you can do either you still get your results back in the same day underwriting you know full 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 underwriting turn time same day underwriting you know we've got you know, we're on fire our guys are, are ready to go we've uh we've been in a situation that we're able to really excel develop and grow and train our folks so that we're we're turning deals faster than we ever have before it used to be we would you know look at from a sales standpoint we'd say okay the loans that we get in in August are going to be the loans that we close in September. But I mean, we're we get loans in August. We're closing them in August. I mean, it's it's, it's, awesome. it's fast. It's really it's really fast. We'll look to my, we'll look to price match competitors as well, uh, and we're looking to uh, to obviously to to open the coffers up, and we're ready to, to 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 bring in the volume. So, so when you're saying you have a loan in August, you're closing in August. You're like what what type of turn times have you seen before? Three weeks. I mean, we it's less than that. I mean, you know, it, a lot of times what happens is is that we would get behind the eight ball a little bit because a loan would go to a, a competitor and they might be more conservative or if they're, you know, if they have their, their, you know, what's the best way to say this? You go to your agency yeah, person that's now trying to do non QM and they just don't have the experience that we have in doing non QM loans. So, you know, it gets, you know, they get a 45 day escrow and we get the loan at day 31. <laughs> I need you to right. rush this. It's your fault if it doesn't close on time. Well, we can close those loans no problem. Now. The, that couple week turn time is all we'll need because the appraisal can be assigned over to us. We, we have the income docs and we can turn everything around very quickly and give you a real answer in, in a matter of a, you know, a day. You know, you're not gonna be waiting days and days and days. And hopefully they'll look at my file sometime because it's a non-QM loan. They only have seven underwriters that can underwrite non-QM loans. All of our underwriters can underwrite non-QM loans. 
there's not an underwriter that works for me that, that doesn't underwrite non-QM loans. You know, it's interesting because if um, you, you you talk to a lot of these companies right now that are offering um, uh, to buy houses cash to remove contingencies, or even if you look at Open Door or some of these companies that have been in that space for a long time, you know, when you offer to buy house cash, you know, it's still 14, 15 days, right? <laughs> so it's like, we can buy this thing cash right now. Well, you're not closing tomorrow. Right. It's closing. They still want to get an appraisal done. Yeah. They still want to get an inspection done. Right. And why wouldn't they? They're spending cash. <laughs> but it's <laughs> interesting. Spending... But what you're doing, what you're telling me is you guys are actually turning transactions at the same yep. time that all these cash transactions are going through. That should be something that should perk the ears up of loan officers and real estate agents out there. So if you're looking at a situation to where maybe time is of the essence, where yep. they're looking for something that's non-contingent, well, what if you could go ahead and write yourself an escrow? What if you could write yourself a contract that was going to be as short as a cash offer? Wouldn't yep. that be something that would be really beneficial to you? There's, there's just great stuff going on with, and opportunities and nuance in the non-QM market is what I've always found fascinating, like different ways to sell these products to a huge swath of people who need them. Now, in previous months when we've had these conversations, we spoke about your staff and your sales team. They've always been out there helping loan officers and real estate agents not only understand how the products work, but also understand how to sell the products. Is that still the right. case? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, we, you and I were just talking before this that we're going to we're going to put together uh, some webinars yeah. and we're going to get our top sales guys out there that and guys, our top sales guys have sat in your seat before, right? They were loan officers. They were sales managers of loan officers and through all kinds of different markets. In fact, my, my EVP that runs all of wholesale sales uh, prior to having this job, he was a retail sales manager. <laughs> he completely understands and has been doing it for 20 plus years. So he, he completely understands the business. All of our sales team completely understand the business. They all have a lot of experience only selling these non-QM products and they can train you and your staff on how to sell these types of loans. One of the things I was thinking about is, is that it was a disclaimer that popped up. Oh, I should have said this. Well, it's 14, it's 15 days if we can get the appraisal done. Well, we can get appraisals done that fast now because the volume is so low on all the other agency markets. The appraisers are now calling us saying, Hey, do you have any orders for us? You know, there's the, the, the tide has turned a little bit, you know, before they're, they, they, you know, you'd send them an order and they'd accept it and they'd look at the property and then deny it two days later. Now it's, Hey, have you got any business for us? We'd love to go appraise all those, all those properties that, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that we couldn't do before. So our, our appraisal turn time is faster. Our, 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 uh, our whole review process on even getting appraisals cleared is fast. The whole thing, it's just, it's humming right along. We're about to add, we're, we, I'm going to say this and my operations manager is going to come and smack me in the back of the head when he watches this video, but uh, we're, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be adding our next couple of weeks for brokers to be able to self-disclose on our website. So, you know, right now the broker goes in, they log in, they put all their requirements in, they press a button, it goes to a team and then they send out the disclosures on their behalf. It takes, you know, it takes, could take by the end of the day or whatever, but if they've got a, they've got a bar on the phone, they want to send them out disclosures right away and get them working on it. It's kind of a pain. They have to wait for somebody else to do something. Uh, then this, this next iteration of our system that's a couple of weeks away, they're going to be able to just click a couple buttons. They'll be able to import all their fees in and send, send that out. They'll be able to send out a full disclosure packet right to their customer, right from our portal, and then go back in and lock the loan and all that kind of stuff. So they can, it's a, it's a slick, slick system. We've worked, um, we've, 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 I give Patrick Russell, who is our, uh, our director of, uh, vice president, director of integrations. And he, he has done such a great job working with our vendors to make sure that we have the top of the line system that makes it real simple for our brokers to use. I told him, I said, my goal here is point, click, submit, and he's getting as close to that as he possibly can. And, and, uh, I, I, my hat's off to Patrick and, and the team there. So, but you know, we have the, we want to get the things closed as fast as possible. We know the time kills deals. We can help your team. We can train you on how to sell these different types of products. We can train your folks on how to interact with brokers, how to overcome objections. Hey, that rate's too high. Hey, what's this? What's the, you know, how, how to help them understand what that payment's doing for them, how they can overcome different payment objections by using interest only payments, uh, by buying down the interest rates, uh, things that they haven't had to do in the past. And if you're newer to the business, if you haven't been in the business for the, you know, the last five or so years, you might not know there's all these other uh, options that are available to get your loans closed. And we're happy to help provide all as many of those options as we possibly can. Well, here's the key guys that you need to understand about this. There's half the non-QM companies there were just a few short months ago, and you're going to see twice the amount of non-QM business for the second half of 2022 and 2023. Fewer options to place your non-QM, 
more non-QM deals going. It's fantastic that Oak Tree is still here to help you with your needs. I would implore everybody right now, even real estate companies, let's reach out to these guys over here and understand how to sell these products. If the business is trending upwards and the rest of the industry is trending downwards, we all know what bus we have to get on, don't we? We want the one that's trending upwards. So let these guys help you understand how to sell the products. If you want to learn any more information about this, all you guys have to do is click the information down below. We'll get you in touch with them and we can set up a training for your entire office. So just reach out to these guys, let them help you out because this is the direction the mortgage and real estate industry is absolutely going. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it, Brian.